way. You need to know who you're working with. Are you going to work with the nice dude that you know is cool and work with you? Y'all got an ideal. Y'all both sit there and put the stuff online. You know you're hiding your face or you're modeling, you're editing, you're modeling. It's not some pervert just trying to take pictures of you and sell them himself or do nasty and stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a world out there. They should make classes. They, they got they got panhandle classes. Exactly. They got classes to I teach you how to, how to be a bum and ask money. Uh, ask for money uh, uh, safely. Instead of, hey, I'm going to send you to trade school because you look like a healthy fella. You shouldn't be out here doing this. I'll send you trade. No, I'm going to send you panhandle class so you don't get a trespassing charge. Right. Or somebody won't call the police on you. It's send true. the person to school so they can make money and be beneficial to the fucking community. It's true. It was just like, um, that's where I came from. It was a, I don't know, it was some show on, I don't know, it was probably on Vice. Yeah. What they did was they, um, people that use drugs. I mean, they use drugs. You know what they're going to do. You can't, you can't, Since the beginning you can't of the stop time. them. So what you do is you give them the, the tools so that they don't do it in a way that is going to create havoc for everybody else. So That's if true. it means that they have to have the right stuff to do the shooting up and it's clean instead of them getting HIV and all this other kind of stuff, let's protect them, even though, because we know they're going to do it, right? Instead of just letting them haphazardly, you know. Because everyone stuff. had an age. Right. It's, same thing with like, you know, weed. I mean, like, weed is weed, right? But, People do lace it. So teach somebody how do you pick the right weed. I mean, and, and they like, try to tell, but they like try to tell people how know. to grow. They tell right, people grow how to grow own. and not do certain right. things. But people yeah. just do anything when right. you're desperate yeah, and you need you money. Yeah, yeah. And as you know, the everything's laced just, with fentanyl. Right. And then exactly. people are dying and then it gives exactly. it a bad look when no one had no exactly. deaths reported on this stuff exactly. ever. But now there's so much hospitalization. It's definitely causing schizophrenia and mental illness now because people are lacing this shit. People are lacing everything. Right. You got to find a place where you could get your stuff and trust Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. and just go and Mm -hmm. realize those other places are temporary for where you can't get to where you need to go because that stuff will ruin you. Oh, well. Even some of the pills, like I've lost opportunities. Even some of those pills, well, you know, I mean, like some of the lace, so. you know, the, some of those Molly and all that kind of stuff. If it's not, if it's somebody get, you don't know who gave it to you, then it's a possibility it could be something else that they're giving you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, I just had a crazy Horse trip, trail. and that Better trip was just something that just messed you up. It can knock a level because it's exactly. all levels. Everything you eat and diet right. and everything is levels in your brain. It's like a car with different fuels. If it's diesel, take diesel, not yeah. premium. And premium, take premium. And regular mid, can take regular mid. If you need flex fuel, and that's all you feel comfortable with for you. But hybrid, you don't put no gas in there. You see what I'm saying? Hybrid, you don't put no or, or the electric. you got to charge it for a long time. You can't put gas in there. You can't just walk into your tank and pour vegetable no. if it's not vegetable. So think of your body like that. I'm not healthy as hell. I just turned 30 last week and I'm regretting everything I ever did in my whole life. And I wish I worked out. I'm talking about (laughs) health wise, everything I eat, everything. As soon as I turn 30, I feel like I'm about to, I'm like, man, I need to start doing sit ups and and push ups and all this stuff I used to do when I played football. I cannot do right now. But walking, you got to walk. But I'm saying mental health with this drug stuff is levels. So if you're going to take something to peak a level, you have to listen to what your doctor is telling you. See, you can't bash big pharma and stuff, but then you're out there doing drugs. <laughs> so if you're going to take the drugs and prescription they give you, and it's what it's supposed to be, and they're oh, not being ripped good. off or nothing, and you take it, mm-hmm. take it the way they told you right. to take it. If it don't work, talk to your doctor. Right. You have a privilege to talk to your doctor. Mm-hmm. Talk to them. Just don't be out there ordering <clears throat> ordering online. Mm-hmm. Counterfeits online of, of Zans and all types of stuff. And doing that type of stuff, ordering online, and then you die, then you want to blame the name brand, but it's not right. theirs no more. Right. Go to the hospital. If you get health care, when you sign up for a job and you want all your money right now instead of putting fourteen dollars out your check to get health insurance, go do that. So when you sit down and talk to your doctor, you can get prescription. Hey, even that, you gotta ask questions. Yeah, and <laughs> your doctor I mean, will ask that, you, does it work? And I have seen people that it has messed them up, even prescription drugs. So you have to be careful with that too. You have That's to ask questions. Yeah. You have to ask questions, and you Side have to effect. be clear of what does this match what is my issue yeah. because you can actually create another type of mental illness by using the wrong type of medication yes you can. yes you can no you can <laughs> and then some people are not honest like you might not say you might go to your psychiatrist you just want to get out of it they'll give you some medication exactly they'll give you some medication but they're asking you questions but they only can give you what they know that you're giving them so if you don't give them all the information let's say you do, do it's something a lot else. of people let's say you're doing world. something else you do some other type of drug and then they it might not mix the, it might not mix but you never told them because you were like ashamed because you didn't want to tell them that hey I'm just I'm messing with this other kind of stuff. Yeah. You might not say it. 
But then that's going to counteract. And then the next thing you know, it's like, what just happened? Yeah. Now I just created something even worse, you know? So you do have to be careful with that too. You still got to ask questions. I say still ask questions, ask yeah. questions, ask questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, seriously, uh-huh. seriously, no, man. I know this personally because I've been diagnosed with stuff before and misdiagnosed and took it off. And, yeah. and the thing with me is, at first, when I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing, it was kind of rolling through. But then I got to a point where I wasn't, and I was being honest, and I wasn't going wow. through. But then it got to a point where I was misdiagnosed, and then something had happened. Exactly. And, but it's just being honest. Right. It all starts with honesty. Mm-hmm. If you start with honesty and tell them every single exact thing as it goes on, and you're not just filling out that paper mm-hmm. to ask you how your day is with some bull crap because you want to leave. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. You could talk to them. Mm-hmm. They're not going to force you to do nothing you don't want to do, but then you can't just like lie. They'll lie to you because you're lying to them. Do you see what I'm saying? And then you can't just stop at going to one place. That's like if a cashier do something bad to me, I I hate all the cashiers. If one cop do something bad to me, I don't hate all the cops. So I'm not going to call police brutality. If one cashier do something to me, I'm not going to hate. If one franchise I go to Mm -hmm. here does something, but the same place does something different, I'm not. So that's like doctors. You go to the wrong place, you might come up with some bad shit. That's just how the world is. Go to another one. And That's what happened to me. I went, I went to one or two places. They can't find out what was wrong with me yeah. one time. I went to another one. They said, oh, you got a lung infection for a while. Here you go. Here's some of the stuff. Okay, because that's how bad you want it. It's just like this game. How bad do you want something? Like you, Right now, I'm sick. I'm going to tell the hospital. They didn't figure out what's going on. So I know I need to go to another one. Right. When I go to another one, they'll be like, oh, here's some antibiotics. And then, boom, you go on your way. I'm not going to say, oh, I hate all the hospitals in the world because... Because you got to understand people are busy and there's millions yes. of things. There's people got their leg yeah, falling off, yeah, their yeah, arm yeah. broke, all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of attention going to that other than mm-hmm. someone coming in don't really yeah. know what's going on. And, mm-hmm. and you don't have primary care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And insurance mm-hmm. and stuff. And it's a priority thing. It sucks and it makes you feel like, damn, nobody did shit for me. Mm-hmm. But you don't have the insurance. Yeah. So it sucks. And then you got to go through the steps. Go to the free place and talk to them, even if they bullshit. And you never know. Just go. You got to go. Sometimes you got to go four times, but you right. get it. That's all I say. Be persistent. Because they, that's uh-huh. what, look, billions of people need help. Uh-huh. You're going to help the people who really want their help. You're yeah. not going to help someone who came one time and said, man, fuck all this, yeah. and then go back to doing the stuff. You, you got to go. If, mm-hmm. Like, my doctor told me every time I go, stop smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I can't stop smoking cigarettes because I'm always stressed out. I could slow down, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm smoking cigarettes. I probably can. I can't tell myself I can't. I probably can, but I don't see myself doing that because it's just what I do. But, you know, that's my fault. Yeah. The, the package say Surgeon General warning yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, it say you rolling yeah. dice with your life, pretty much. Yeah. That's what it say. Yeah. You rolling dice. Yeah. You got the casino playing with the devil. You're doing something that, that might hurt you or might, you know, if you inhale or not. You're not supposed to inhale nothing but weed. But some people still be inhaling and inhaling. You're supposed to puff it. Like, it's puff. Mm-hmm. A little bit inhale. Don't inhale everything. You can inhale like four hits out of cigarette, but you're puffing. Mm-hmm. It helps you ponder. It helps you think. It's a tradition. It's just been around. Mm-hmm. But what else do you do? You know, you got to work out. I should work out. I should be walking more like I used to. I should work out and do it. Like I told you that story to do. Try to pick me up. That crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You got to start walking and, and doing stuff. And But mental health, it just depends on the person in the environment. But all around that, I've seen... With different types of people, like uppity people, downy people, people that just were strung out, people who were doing the jacking, people who was doing the drug dealing, people who was on the drugs, people who was all that. From when I seen mental health of all this stuff and the people who just don't do none of that and look at that stuff as nothing, but they still have mental health because of other things. Mm-hmm. What I can see, I'm nobody special. But my opinion is if you walk, if you exercise, do something on a schedule, mm-hmm. have some type of income coming in where you feel wanted or feel alive you don't feel like you're outdated no matter how old you're getting you feel like you're part of your generation in society that helps with mental illness now social media is known i'm not making this up you can look it up it's already known to cause mental illness yeah way before it don't even have their kids on way before yeah. yes yeah. like he just said people yeah. create, don't even have their kids on <laughs> It, it uh, does, but it's a business now. It's for business. It's not. They don't tell you to put all that shit on right. there. Indeed. It's supposed to be for people to communicate and keep up with each other. Mm-hmm. Just like Silk Road mm-hmm. and, and Craigslist and all that was supposed to be for regular things, but it was just trapping on Silk Road and pimping and selling bitches on, um, and I don't call them that, but that's what they call it. Mm-hmm. I call it 
selling women that are confused at the time of what it is they want to do <laughs> and all types of other things. And selling men too yeah. on a uh, back page. Uh, the feds shut that down. Um, Silk Road, they were selling illegal narcotics and drugs and prescriptions and everything. That got shut down. They try to do the shit on Craigslist. That stopped. It's just anything you create to give people instruction like this is how you use this. They're going to turn it into something else. So there's nothing we could do about that. It's always going to happen. When it was alcohol was illegal, they bootlegged alcohol. Then it became legal. Weed mm -hmm. was illegal. Niggas had weed. Mm -hmm. They made weed legal somewhere mm -hmm. here and then. Mm -hmm. Now niggas lacing it with fentanyl so it can be better mm -hmm. than the legal stuff. Exactly. And exactly. All this outrageous stuff. If I got it, somebody died from smoking some weed, man. That's weird to me. Yeah. Weed brought people together. A lot of everyone I pretty much knew in my life. I met through marijuana at some point, except for some, but majority, 99%. So it does bring people together. It's a cultural thing. But if you're doing it to get high and do stupid stuff and break laws and dumb shit like that, then you get what's coming to you. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it as a medical thing, then it shouldn't cause you that trouble because it can heal seizures and things like that. Mm -hmm. And all that other opioids and all that crap, mm -hmm. you got to go to your doctor. If you're in pain and break your arm and you need some opioids, you got to go to your doctor. They do have generic versions where it's not too addictive and stuff and it's not as strong. And you could go to your doctor and and, and, and try to talk to your, your, your people. It just depends on what assurance you got and how bad you want assurance. I need assurance, but I haven't been going to the place signing up every single day. Even if I get denied and then wait until the 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is and going again and again until I get it. So that's my fault. Even though it shouldn't be that hard, but I'm not selfish. There's trillions of people, yo, that need help. So it's a priority thing, man. And that could cause mental illness itself. Right. Yeah. Priority. Right. So let me ask you about balance. So because you're, you're mentioning all these things and... and doing all these different types of things. I've seen it. So do you think it's more like that people just need to be more balanced at what they do? So meaning that you, you do everything in moderation. So you don't do everything yeah. to the extreme. So you could do the, you know, just like you can do the Coca-Cola, you could do the caffeine. They used to put Coke in Coca-Cola. Right, exactly. So, so who am I? So everything really, <laughs> pretty much like if we were really think about it, just about everything is bad. And including, um, and I know this sounds really bad, vegetables and, and vegetables and Fruits and stuff like that can still be bad. Yeah, if you do if too much fruit. Do too much, and it has different stuff in it that should not be in it. So anything could be bad. Mm -hmm. And who grew it? Right. And where'd you get it from? Right. Or so what the farmer used? Just say and... moderation for everything. Yeah. <laughs> and just like solve everything. Some people, when they're desperate and they own a business and they're running out of money and they need help, sometimes they stop going to the place they need to go to to get the stuff that everyone else do, and they take some shortcuts, and it might come with some bad products that cause bad things they don't want to be responsible mm -hmm. for. That's it's gambling. You gotta realize yeah. if you're not growing your own stuff and doing it yourself, yeah, you're gambling. You know, anything. Yeah, man, that's your life. That's anything. Everything is gambling. Yeah, Every day we get everything I mean, we is see, gambling. This we, conversation is gambling. Everything exactly. is gambling. We, we see everything people go to go to um, places to the grocery store and buy certain products. And something happens. Something something's wrong with that product, and they have to recall it. Bad so shipping. Say, exactly. So Someone stole something risk. and replaced it. Someone. <laughs> Start to do some terrorism yeah, and everybody yeah, yeah. and inject all the apples with, uh, with, with some who exactly. knows. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too much going right. on. Right. And, and, and it starts with you first, though. It does start with working out. Mm -hmm. And it just starts with writing down what you're eating and leveling and stuff. They got Fitbits that track you. It's too much stuff going on in exactly. the future that people didn't have right. back then. We yeah. should live longer than all of them. To. We should be living till 200 to 150 mm -hmm. by now. Back then, them people lived, your grandparents, my grandparents were old, 90, mm -hmm. 80. We could live long, but yeah, we're choosing yeah. not to because we don't want to work on this stuff. You got to work out. You have to work out because say you do eat a bad apple or drink something right. bad, your body could fight it stronger wow. because you're working out. Right. I, I'm not going to get mad if I eat nothing but gas station chili and nachos <laughs> every single day and then something happened one bad time and I'm like, damn, I'm unhealthy. I eat gas station chilies and nachos every freaking day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I suppose, like, you know that chili and stuff. You seen Osmosis Jones, nigga. You know what I mean, my bro? You yeah. seen Osmosis Jones. You see how it went on? He ate a bad chili dog or something, and then that stuff happened. That's going to happen. But if you're trying to eat healthy and work on this stuff and something happens, then that seems more appropriate to say something than, 
you know, you eat chili, like gas station chili, not like fancy gas station to make it look fancy with the wild wilds and the sandwich. I'm talking about like side of the road in the middle of nowhere, chili dogs every day, something bound to happen. Right. Yeah. Right. So do you want to continue with the next thing or do you want I mean, to? We, we were pretty much, we still talking. I can turn his yeah, around now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is good topics because it's different. A lot of people feel the same way about all this stuff, but they don't speak it. They just want to... they seen how other people got treated, having opinions about certain things, oh, yeah, and they're scared to speak up. But then yet, when something happens to someone they, you know, they don't know, they're ready. If someone else go march, oh, yeah, I'm going to go march too. But if something happens, they're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to just keep doing what I'm doing. I feel like you should speak up because I've heard cases where people sued the hell out of people for stuff well, and they won stuff, right? mm-hmm. and they won but then I've seen cases mm-hmm. where people lie mm-hmm. they put their own hair in this mm-hmm. stuff they mm-hmm. put their own stuff like oh I found this I had someone do that to me oh I got this raw meat from here no you didn't you just brought some raw you're trying to pull something you know ain't no raw meat they know one's selling no raw meat mm-hmm. oh I got this raw meat here no you didn't right. you know so that's just right. it's life so, we want to we want to just turn tables. <laughs> so I'm about to get put the spotlight on you for a second. Oh, um, so <laughs> you said, "Oh no, maybe you I, say I'm an open book." Right? I That's am, what you I am, but I, I kind of <laughs> hate <laughs> attention. But I but I like having an opinion. It's just I want yeah. people to hear my opinion right. and not know where it came from. Exactly. Sometimes not know where it came from because I'm opinionated. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's part of voices. That's the question. That's the question. <laughs> Ask me anything. Okay, it's part of the voices. Ask okay, me so we had a good conversation here and. You have a, a like good opinions and you have good thoughts on things and it seems like you're very extremely knowledgeable and you recognize where you know a lot of things in your life have went where you could have changed things if you would like to have done things differently. Um, so now I'm gonna put the spotlight. How did you get here? <laughs> how did you get to this point? So the way I like to start is I, I basically, of course, just introduce yourself. Tell me your name. Big you know, Sprint. And, okay, Big Sprint. Big <laughs> All right, Sprint. Big Sprint. Where are you from? Big Sprint. Um, I was born in New York, but I grew up in like Maryland, and I grew up in Fredericksburg, Stafford. You know, really grew up, like, sixth grade and up. All my weird experiences and everything. Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Virginia, the DMV. Okay. The DMV. Okay, so when did you get to the Virginia area? Um, a half of fifth grade. Fifth grade. Okay. But we were going back and forth. Back and forth, okay. Half of fifth grade, almost the end of fifth grade. Virginia, Maryland. Yeah, 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 Virginia. Okay. Yeah, Maryland, fifth Maryland, grade, Virginia, and then here, Virginia. fifth grade. Okay, so I got to Virginia officially, fifth, fifth grade. grade. Like, 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 like half of fifth grade. Um, and so then on, it's been straight Virginia. It's been Virginia, okay. but it's been moving around with other people from places or going back and forth just to visit and other things. Just yeah. still having that ideology of moving around and stuff. And I tell you, it was a good, great decision because they wanted to raise me and my brother in a better place. But I'm going to speak for myself because me and my brother got some things going on. So I speak for myself. For myself, um, it was to keep me out of trouble, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, you're in a nice area. It's, it's nice, but at the same time, when you the, the streets is everywhere. So it's a decent, it's decent. It's decent. It's way better than certain, certain circumstances in third world countries and other things. So yes, it is great. Okay. You know. So, so you didn't spend any time in New York? So you were... I was a kid. Born. I was a kid, but... Already as a kid, I saw shooting. I saw police come look for my cousins and all types of stuff and dumb stuff, police chases, things like that. But nothing I really understood. I'm a kid. You know, I didn't understand it until I got older. And I'm like, whoa, you know. So I didn't really go back to New York like for that stuff. We went back to visit family and nothing bad happened then. But when I was living there in the 90s, you just heard sirens and seen things. You wasn't understanding. Even in the nice part, you just... One minute you leaving somewhere and a car is and the police is chasing. It's like a video game. It's like you thought that was normal. It's like cool, hey, run, 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 like everybody else. Like you're watching cops. That's how I was. Like we we're coming from the laundromat one time and we we're like this close to some dude. He just pulls a gun out and he's shooting in the air, yo. And it's crazy. It's like you think this shit is cool, but it's not. It's like horrible. Like that's bad for the community. Don't do that. A bullet could hit a kid or something. Mm-hmm. But as a kid, it was just like oh, like we're run from it. But it's like oh. And then Maryland, nothing happened. Exactly. Okay. Maryland was kind of like a transition phase. I started living with my dad, and he was disciplined, like really disciplined. It was just he didn't really do much. We stayed in the house. I don't know one other person. Wasn't really allowed to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Like New York, we could just leave. 
You can just leave the house and really kids. We run around with other kids and, and like an older kid and like older cousins. It was just different. But then like really getting outside, outside and doing the most here. New York is like that though. Yeah. Where you can, the communities are very close. Yeah. Together where you can the kids go could outside. Just, the kids could just be kids. Like they're smart enough. I don't know. It's just playing with the hydrant and stuff. Playing basketball with food crates and on fences stuff like i remember that and they're seeing like you know i call them landmarks which is like people that's everyone seen in the community for a long time even if they're homeless or good but you've seen them for years and you know them so you have like an indian man that used to hang out in this like part in between the buildings with the fences where they like dump trash bags and spray paint like rocks and weirdness and he was like a landmark of where we were in the Bronx. It was this old Indian dude and it's just like normal stuff. You didn't really think someone was going to come pick the kid up like come here boy you coming with me like type. We were just allowed to go out play but it was, we were selective like it was kind of like strict but not. All that strict shit went away when we moved here. I was 12 or like <laughs> 13 or or what, 11? There was no rules. No rules? Not when we moved here. <laughs> there, I felt like so we won the lottery so or happened? something. Do you think it was because the change in environment because New York was a little bit different? I think it was the first house that we ever had that we didn't share with somebody. Because like, we were living with people and stuff like that. So I just think it was like the first house that was just like our house. My dad was always at work. He government crazy crap. So he gone, you know. I'm in the house. My mom, she worked. But she brought home. My brother, he at school. I'm at school. The first year was kind of regular. But then when I started hanging out with people, I started just wilding out. You know, it was fun. I never got to just go over everyone's house and do all this stuff before. So I'm doing all this stuff. And then it's just like everyone's into kind of the same thing. I remember I met Waiter. I met his brother. Oh, so you I met, a yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> okay. sixth grade, seventh oh, wow. grade. I started talking to them. I started meeting other people. Then I started hanging out with people. They didn't hang out. First of all, you're supposed to hang out with people. The person you meet, hang out with. We just started. I started hanging with strangers. And then I just started hanging out with everybody. And then it just got out of hand. You know, it just, it was free. Started working on music. That was the best thing. I like music. I just wish I took it seriously during certain stages of my life. There's certain pictures. First of all, I went from seeing us together in every picture and everything. Then there was a long phase where you did not see me. You saw whopping every little, all of them together, but you didn't see me because I was doing other shit. And then I came back in and then it's just, everyone stayed consistent and kept doing what they needed to do. I, I was just like, I had the equipment. I was recording other people. I was doing gospel music. Mm. I was making beats. I wanted to be a gangster rapper. I was doing <laughs> trap rap. I was, I wanted to be pop techno. I wanted to do too much. And it's like, I didn't stick to one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, every time they did something, they stuck to it. Mm -hmm. I, I was just everywhere. I had personal problems. I'm running around in the streets with street people mm -hmm. doing, in the, like, what, if you ask my, fifth grade, fifth grade. no, no, this is more years, middle okay, school, so, high school, so and then after that, that track, high school I too. That, I want to stay in that, that first, those first couple of years. Cause yeah. I, I'm just trying to get a, like a feel for what it was like making that transition from New York to, you know, cause you were, it grade. happened so, grade is so what, like fast. Middle school, I think that's like yeah. middle school or and something. So what was your, your younger years like? I then? thought I was an adult. And I thought I was grown was just house. because I was allowed to leave the house. I wasn't allowed oh, to before. You okay. can, but it wasn't, you could go with the other kids to school and back with no supervision except for like one. It looks like you're leading a bunch of sheep. Mm -hmm. Like 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 back in the Bible days, it's one adult and then a bunch of kids walking home. Mm -hmm. But we never got to do the most. And like I was getting expelled and we were fighting. Like older kids and stuff like there's a lot of fighting, lot of fighting. And for no reason mm -hmm. like that's just how boys was mm -hmm. in new york like you just fighting mm -hmm. like hitting each other's head with umbrellas fighting so oh yes you got it all together we yeah. got expelled for like bringing knives and shit yeah hold on one second we got two shows on one show i know yeah okay. hey that's, that's, that's good that's why i was like do we stop that's good that's <laughs> good start. yeah i'm good i'm not gonna say nothing crazy that i'm gonna get